this is a, a right uh, revision uh, stepidotomy uh, following two previous failed operations uh, which were done by our surgeon in another country, in another uh, place. And uh, I'm just starting the melody exploration here on the right here. And you can see, first thing is that we have, of course, dislocated uh, stapes piston, which is not attached to the incus anymore. But we need to keep uh, always in, in, in mind that there uh, could be other cause of failure. And in that case, if I move the malus, you see strange movement of the incus, and especially when you try to move it like this. You hear the, you, we have this uh, hypermobility of the incus, which means that there is an incus dislocation. So it's always important to determine the real or, or the main cause of failure because uh, in, in this case, if we just think that we are in face of, we have uh, just in front of uh, a dislocated piston, which is a very easy cause of uh, failure to treat with, uh, then the, there will be a failure because, of course, we don't care about the incus dislocation and we will attach another piston to the incus, which is not going to work. So that I just wanted to put this, this video online because I think it is important to point out the fact that sometimes we have our different cause of failure and several cause of failure together. So of course I will first remove the stapes piston. Before removing it we need to check uh, if we can have uh, access to the distal tip more or less of the piston, which is not a major issue for the Teflon prosthesis, but it's always important to check that. And you see there is no uh, protrusion, no much protrusion of the prosthesis, so I can remove it easily. And then, of course, the plan is to perform a malus to stapedotomy procedure in this case. So the, I think this video is only interesting for the for making the right this, uh, the right this, this, the uh, the right diagnosis in terms of cause of failure. All right. So I will go back to. Uh, the oval window niche later on, you see this uh, pernephatic membrane, which is uh, right here. I can see, can I see this that the previous surgeon was doing uh, stapedotomy without interposition, because I, I don't see any interposition here. This is the previous stapedotomy here, and there is some residual posterior cruise here, but this is not going to be a major issue. What the shook, s'il vous plaît? I will remove this uh, residual stapes uh, superstructure here. Will help me to place the vein in the better position. All right, okay. So now what I'm gonna do, of course, I need to do the malice relocation. So we need to dissect uh, the malice. Can it mange du marteau? The cord of tympani is there, so we try to preserve it, but it's not going to be very easy because it's in the middle of the field when I work to the malice. So here is the, the cord of tympani here. You can maybe find a little bit of a cleavage plane. There will be, of course, an overstretch uh, corda, but I cannot avoid it. All right, that's fine. So now let's work on the malleus. First, I need to remove more bone here on the, on the left because I plan to perform the malleus relocation. Uh, so I need to uh, remove a little bit of bone. Curette, s'il vous plaît. The point is that when I will relocate the malleus, it will become in contact with this part of the bone. So it's important to remove it. Otherwise, there's a risk of uh, malus ankylosis to the neck of the malus. 
Okay, so now let's work on the malice with the needle and the sucker. So as you know, I need to uh, do a periosteal flap. Can you move the We've got a really anterior malleus here, table en avant, so I need to move the table anteriorly. Stop, un douze, s'il vous plaît. Quel est mon marteau? Ok. So here is the mat, it's really anterior, you can see that, it's really anterior to the, uh, very far away from the uh, uh, foot plate. So this is definitely a clear indication for the mat location technique. Because I, if I leave it like this, I will have to bend the prosthesis too much anteriorly. And I will not get a final vertical position of the prosthesis as, you, as I always wa want to have. At the beginning, at the end of the operation. So let's dissect this uh, periosteal flap. <coughs> you see, I'm using uh, with my left hand a sucker, uh, pulling a little bit the the flap up, so it helps me to dissect the malleus. So I can go anterior now to the malleus handle. I will be close to now to the uh, umbo, which is the last part which I need to dissect, always more difficult. I'm just following the bone. Always trying to pull a little bit the uh, flap with the sucker. The risk to make a tear is mainly with the embo, of course, but I, I mean. It's not a major issue because we have pain graft. Okay, I think it's fine now. I can go on the other side. Yeah, that is good. So let's check now the tympanic membrane, which is fine. There's no problem, no tear. All right, so I can re-elevate the flap. So again, I keep the incus in place because it helps me to dissect more easily the malleus. I, re I will remove the incus, of course, but only after having completely separated the malleus from the tympanic membrane. Okay, now it's fine. And now I can remove the incus. I think we can see the dislocation more easily here. Uh, can I see the The most important thing is to make a clear diagnosis, which is not always easy. But you can see here definitely this uh, this joint here, which you, which is really dislocated. You see this joint here? You see how it is completely separated here so it doesn't look like but when you move it like this you can see it goes completely separated all right so now we're moving this now push house There we go. Now I need to cut the ten stamp and eye tendon direct. 
Point préparé un torp. Hein. There we go. All right. So now relocation. Can they see the play d'abord? C'est bouché encore là. Okay, so I'm grabbing now the malice. You see the position of the hook always. I, I try to insist on that point. The hook needs to be placed close to the neck. Otherwise, we can break the malice if we put it too close to the elbow. And then I pull the malice until I reach the resistance of the anterior temporomalar ligament, and then I can overstretch it like this. And now you see uh, the malice is now overlying the uh, over window, which is fine. And now I will. Uh, this will enable me to measure more accurately the distance from Malice to, uh, to foot plate. Okay, so I need to stick the, the tympanic membrane back to the Malleus like this, prior measuring, because there's a tendency to have this Malleus uh, becoming really uh, loose a little bit, so medialized. I think it's fine. Not exactly, so I need to. You can see what this is what I mean. A tendency, no, no, cautious to medialize, so I need to stick it back first. Like this. And now I know that I'm going to measure from the right position of the matters. Okay. As you know, I'm using an elongated stapes measuring rod which runs with uh, three, uh, four notches instead of three. The regular one went from 3.5 to 4.5. This one runs from uh, uh, five to eight. I'm gonna go down to the over window like this. And, if, and you understand that if we do not relocate the malice, we cannot measure. So we have uh, the second notch in front of, me, of the malice, which is six. So I will cut the process at 6.5, which is the I would say the most frequently used uh, or found length. Okay, so table down what please. Stop. So plan is now to the plan now is to recreate the fenestra. Table down Marco. I will use the micro drill directly through the, the perinephalic membrane. Stop. Oui. So you see, I'm using a 0.7 millimeter burr. Montez la table, s'il vous plaît. And uh, 0.7 uh, millimeter diameter, a suction tube, stop. Okay. Merci. It's only with the membrane I can use the hook also to do that, depends. All right, that is good. You see now the perinephalic fluid. So we have definitely a nice uh, stapedotomy here. So I can cover it now with uh, the vein graft. So bleeding a little bit. But this is not a major issue. It's only a small... Uh, 
just need to wait a little bit and then we'll put the vein over it and pull the torque okay so i prepared the vein graft of course as usual at the beginning of the operation and i will insert the vein now Here is the vein, so we're facing, of course, the intima of the vein here. As I said many times, the uh, vein graft interposition is really important, and I would say mandatory uh, any interposition when we do a torque, when we use a torque. Because the risk is to have a protrusion of the prosthesis within the labyrinth. And of course, the interposition will help to decrease the risk. It's a quite a nice one, large enough to cover completely the over window. Because if it's a too small one, when we put the process, sometimes it goes too too short, too small. There we go. You see now the position of the stapedotomy. Okay, and of course now we need to prepare the torque, which is the uh, great medical torque. With hydrox lapidite head and teflon shell. I like it because this is made in hydrox lapidite with a central groove. And because if it's hydrox lapidite, we do not need any cartilage interposition. So this is 6, 7, and 6.5 is right here. So it's 0.4 millimeter diameter teflon shaft. Okay, so you can, you can have a nice view of the vein with the previous tape, with the position of the penestra. <coughs> and I will now introduce the process. The plan is to place the shaft within the gap here, which is good. And now I will place the prosthesis parallel to the malleus handle. I'm thinking about the, the groove of the malleus. I need to place the quarter tympani on the other side. Okay. There we go. And now I will pull the values, introducing it then with the within the the groove. see nice position of the torp within the underneath the malleus sandal so I will I need to reposition the flap the plan here is to be sure that the process is on the right line too not too long if the process is too long when we do this when we re-elevate the flap it goes more posterior contact with, with the posterior wall of the bony canal wall so it's a good sign and now now I think it's really nice we have a a nice uh, final vertical position of the torque. I cannot have access to the round window, <coughs> otherwise I would need to remove too much bone, so I don't want to do that. But there is no problem, the shaft is located within the stapedotomy. You see the flexibility of the reconstruction and the final vertical position of the process. So it all, all looks fine, so I will reposition the flap now. Final checking again, which is good, and then it's finished. Okay, so I will put again a marrow cell, and of course this will be removed on a few days. That is it. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I think it was mainly interesting for the beginning and the discussion of how to determine exactly what, the, what is the cause of failure. This is one of the most important points in terms of revision stapes operation. 
So thank you very much for watching and see you again soon. Bye bye.